Well, my name is Travis Reyes. I'm an artist here at Bentley Gallery, just uh, uh, newly signed to Bentley in the spring. Uh, this piece here is uh, uh, one of the first pieces I did when I first got to Arizona. Started looking at looking at marks, marks as objects. Uh, definitely inspired by uh, the hard edge, California hard edge painters, and bringing the color into it. Uh, at the time, too, I uh, was inspired by those hard edge painters um, had a certain kind of flatness and austerity to their work that I wanted to challenge a little bit and make the work more three-dimensional. Brought in other materials, like the vinyls, reflective materials that uh, both give an illusion of space and, and give an illusion of things floating, but at the same time kind of challenge that austerity that I saw in, the, in what was happening with the flatness and the seriousness of what uh, hard edge painting was uh, or has been in the past. And uh, this is probably one of the first uh, you know, larger pieces I did while I was a, a, a graduate student at Arizona State uh, in just the last uh, two or three years here. I just finished up school there just this past year. In terms of challenging kind of what was happening with hard edge painting, I wanted to try and bring in some of more of a, what I would consider a lowbrow materiality of the work and also the ways to get rid of that flatness that happens with hard edge painting. And so the resins, uh, the vinyls give a sense of depth. The vinyls have a sheen to them, so I, I kind of associate that with lowbrow painting or lowbrow material. And uh, again, bring some whimsy into the work uh, that I don't think was there under Carl Benjamin and Hammersley and all those hard edge folks. Um, again, just to challenge that. So this has uh, uh, layers of resin slowly built up, layers of painting, um, underneath it is actually some uh, ink drawing and just layers and washes of acrylic. And then finally this large gesture, which is to me it's kind of like taking a scribble and turning it into a, an object. And uh, this large gesture then over the top, floating over the top of everything, just barely lifted off the edge so that you get both an illusion of space and an actual space by the fact that the resin kind of picks that final piece of this just off the surface a little bit, leaving a little bit of a a shadow edge to the painted surface. Yeah, on these two pieces, there's two of the more recent pieces that I did, and there was this evolution. Uh, as I think as you spend more time in the Southwest landscape, it starts to have an impact on the things you make and, and how you react to the things you make. And, and so the, the Southwest landscape had a big impact on, on how I was working, and I started thinking more in terms of landscape. And these pieces I consider landscapes. Now, the, the connection to hard edge painting for me really came from the fact that I used the computer to sort of do my sketching and the setups for a lot of my work. And pixels and polygons have that sort of aesthetic that relates, relates itself to this hard edge painting. And, and for me, it brought a, a nice artificialness to the pieces. They're not they're trying to be landscapes, but at the same time, they're trying to be these sort of flat uh, hard edge gestures. Yeah, I have a background in architecture and in landscape architecture, and I think that's kind of lent itself to the work also. It's lent itself my, my being drawn to, you know, the hard edge painters and that sort of uh, that, that refined, uh, sculpted, uh, kind of drafted aesthetic that I'm, I'm interested in. And I think even the forms, you know, yeah, I see it as landscape, but at the same time, it could be architecture, it could be inhabited. I don't know how far away we are, how close we are um, to the work, and all those things interest me uh, in making it. Yeah, this piece was is somewhere in the middle of, uh, as I was doing my uh, uh, graduate school at Arizona State, and uh, uh, it's more digital. Um, it's more uh, playing with glitches and letting the form start to fragment and break apart. And I go back and forth. Um, sometimes I keep the forms all together like in the earlier pieces and sometimes I allow them to start to, to break apart. But I do it in a very calculated way um, using the computer to, to simulate the explosion and uh, giving me something uh, to paint from. Uh, I work from when I've created an image that I'm excited about, that I want to work from, uh, I, I really get it down to every nook and cranny that I need uh, before I start painting. 
uh, Gerhard Richter he talked about in his book The Daily Practice of Painting why he had worked from photographs and I have some kind of a similar attitude that uh, uh, the photograph uh, gives him you know subject matter and a color palette and it gives him proportions and I like to have everything in place in the same way so that once I start painting there's not a lot of an intuitive process that happens anymore I'm just kind of uh, creating the piece and I have a similar sort of control <laughs> need for control when I'm actually uh, finally deciding that this is what I want to paint so even though it has a, a sense of uh, I don't know uh, feeling that maybe things are thrown at it or things are being made up as I go along uh, it's all pretty well pre-planned uh, created in a series of layers again using something like Photoshop to create those layers and and uh, keep playing with it in the computer until I'm, I'm, I feel like I, I, I'm ready to, to finally uh, break it apart and start painting it.